Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday said Israel did not return for further truce talks in Cairo because Hamas's demands were, quote, delusional. They want to defeat Israel. Of course we will not agree to them. But when Hamas drops these delusional demands, we can move forward. The Egyptian and Qatari mediated talks to try to reach a ceasefire in Gaza and secure the release of over 100 Israeli hostages have yet to produce results. A round of inconclusive talks in Cairo ended on Tuesday. Netanyahu said the demands included ending the war and leaving Hamas as it is. <laughs> Adding pressure are the thousands of Israelis who gathered in Tel Aviv Saturday night, calling for the immediate release of all hostages still in Gaza. Yeah, I'm here um, for my uncle Michel Nissenbaum, which was kidnapped on the 7th of October and he's still held by Hamas and he's sick. We want a deal now to get all the hostages home. Some 1,200 were killed in Hamas's October attack and another 253 seized hostage. More than 100 were released in a short-lived November truce. Israel's air and ground offensive have devastated much of Gaza, killing over 28,000 people, according to Palestinian health authorities. Israeli plans to storm Rafah, where more than half of Gaza's 2.3 million population are sheltering, have prompted international concern, something Netanyahu dismissed. Whoever is telling us not to operate in Rafah is telling us to lose the war. I won't give it a hand. Hamas chief Ishmael Hania blamed Israel for a lack of progress in achieving a ceasefire deal in Gaza, the group said in a statement on Saturday. Hania said Hamas would only accept a complete halt in fighting, Israeli withdrawal from Gaza, as well as the release of Palestinian prisoners serving long sentences in Israeli jails. Netanyahu again vowed that Israel will continue fighting until all goals are achieved. The United States has proposed an alternative draft United Nations Security Council resolution, according to the text seen by Reuters on Monday. It calls for a temporary ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war and opposes a major Israeli ground offensive in Rafah in southern Gaza. Washington has been averse to the word ceasefire in any UN action on the Israel-Hamas war. However, the U.S. draft text echoes language that President Joe Biden said he used last week in conversations with Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel plans to storm Rafah where more than one million Palestinians are sheltering, prompting international concern. It was not immediately clear if or when the draft resolution would be put to a vote. The U.S. put forward the text after Algeria requested the council vote Tuesday on its draft resolution. Algeria is demanding an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield quickly signaled that it would be vetoed and said the initial draft resolution could jeopardize, quote, sensitive negotiations on hostages. A resolution needs at least nine votes in favor and no vetoes by the United States, France, Britain, Russia or China to be adopted. President and Chairperson of the Board of Afri Exim Bank, Your Excellencies Ambassadors and Press, all protocol observed. of the state of Palestine. Non pas diminuer de peine. Nothing.
المتحدة لتحقيق هذه الأهداف على أساس. <تصفيق> are arriving to the hospital. Fear is growing among Palestinians packed into their last refuge in Gaza that Israel will soon launch a planned assault on the southern city of Rafah after truce talks in Cairo ended inconclusively. Israel faced growing international pressure on Wednesday as talks in the Egyptian capital involving the United States, Israel, Egypt and Qatar came to an end without any sign of a breakthrough. Officials did say, though, that Tuesday's talks were constructive and would continue. More than one million Palestinians are crammed into Rafah, next to the border with Egypt. Many there are living in tent camps and makeshift shelters after fleeing Israeli bombardments elsewhere in Gaza. The Israeli military says it wants to flush out Islamist militants from hideouts in Rafah and free hostages being held there after the Hamas rampage in Israel on October 7th. However, it has given no details of a proposed plan to evacuate civilians. The World Health Organization's representative for the West Bank in Gaza, Richard Peppercorn, said an offensive in Rafah could overwhelm its already overburdened health system. Israel says it takes steps to minimize civilian casualties and accuses Hamas fighters of hiding among civilians, including in hospitals and shelters, something the militant group denies. Israeli forces shelled eastern areas of Rafah overnight and pounded several areas of Han Yunus in southern Gaza, residents said. Rafa neighbours Egypt, but Cairo has made it clear it will not allow a refugee exodus over the border. And more than 68,290 injured in Israeli strikes on Gaza since October 7th, the enclave's health ministry said on Wednesday. Israeli tallies state that at least 1,200 Israelis were killed and around 250 were taken hostage in the Hamas raid on southern Israel on October 7th. Israel has vowed to fight on until it eradicates Hamas and has made the return of the last hostages a priority. Hamas says Israel must commit to ending the war and withdrawing from Gaza.